Well, hello, and thank you for joining me on the summit called Hopeless to Happy. I'm super excited to welcome my guest, Ann Jones, who is a healer, author, and speaker. Um, she and I are doing a talk today called Turning Karma, Curses, and Soul Imprints into Joy. So welcome, Anne. And, Hi, uh, how are you? Good, thank you. Yes, Good. I'm at the end of my day. I think you're the beginning of yours. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of the time difference, but um, I'm glad that you're able to join me. Good. So um, welcome. And so um, I was thinking about this um, whole topic of healing, and I, and I see so many um, healers out here today, and it seems pretty um, amazing that everybody has like their special way of bringing healing into the world. And so I'm curious how you actually began this journey of healing. If you don't mind sharing, you know, a little bit of your story of how this came about for you, I would love to hear it. Yeah, of course. Well, I was lucky in that I didn't start my healing journey or my spiritual journey like some people do when they hit a wall. I was actually having a very good life living in Malaysia as an expat wife to my husband working out there. And I was teaching the expats how to use computers, which was, so I was fully absorbed, had lots going on in my life. But one day I was having a rest after doing a, a course and um, suddenly I heard a voice and it was so clear, so strong. It was, it was almost as though I'd just picked the phone up and there was, there was a, somebody on the other line, on the end of the line. And the voice said to me very clearly, isn't it time you started healing? And I hadn't been in my thoughts at all. It was, and it was a sort of complete what? And I sat up, bolt upright. I know, I remember so clearly that feeling of, oh my God, what's happening? And the voice continued and said, um, again, said the sacred thing again, isn't it time you started healing? And I questioned it and well, what, what do you mean, how? And what, what do I do? Uh, and the, the weird thing was I was saying it out loud, you know, as if I was actually talking to somebody in the room. And the, and the voice replied, speak to Sal. And I only knew one Sal there as an expat. And she was on my committee um, for the magazine I had produced. So that was it. The phone then sort of went dead, as it were. And I was left feeling shimmery and very excited. and really vital and this is about 25 years ago and uh, very excited about the whole thing and, and as if i'd been plugged into the ele electricity system you know so it was buzzing anyway that day i had a went to a function in the evening and sal was there and i couldn't wait to speak to her so i went up to her and i said you'll probably think i'm completely crazy but i need to speak to you about healing and this was a time when healing wasn't the big thing it is now. I mean, as much more people are really open to it now, the break had just started at that time. So that gives you some idea. And, uh, but she said, yes, that's right. Yes, good. And I'll send some books over to you and you read those books and you'll remember everything. You know how to do this. All you've got to do is just do it and remember. And that was it. So the next day she sent some books around and they were Betty Shine, uh, who's an English medium healer, very popular at that time. And she sent me the books and I took them away on holiday. I was going on holiday the very next day and I took them away and I read the books. And it made total sense to me because Betty Shine's approach to healing was you're giving love. You just put your hand out and you give love. And I thought, oh, I like that. I really like that. I like the simplicity of it. And... It feels genuine, it feels good. And, and I went on holiday and I was zapping everybody, as I call it, zap, zap, zap. Sit down, I'm gonna zap you. And everybody that, that came near me, I said, what's wrong with you? Well, not, not much. Oh, my shoulder's a bit stiff. Right, let me zap you. So it's <laughs> went on, it was great fun. And, and people were feeling the heat and they were getting results. So when I came back, I went to see Sal again. We had lunch together. 
And I said to her, I'm, I'm intrigued. I mean, I said, I'm, I'm having the time of my life. This is, feels so right. And this is what I've been waiting for, really, without knowing it. And I think a lot of people are like this. They have the calling, but they actually don't, don't realize what it is that's drawing them forward. And I said, so I'm very excited about this, but how, you didn't seem at all surprised when I walked up to you and she said, well, no, I, my, my spirit guides spoke to me a few months ago and they said you would be coming and to help you on your way. And well, I was a bit sort of the good spooky way to start, but it was a, it was a great confirmation for me. And I, all I said about that was, well, it's taken me three months to find her. So I'm a bit of a slow learner, but I got there eventually and the message did get through to me. And our messages from spirit always do eventually get through to us. Even if we do busy, busy our lives and don't do meditation, eventually the message will get through. Yeah. So I've been doing it ever since. And I started, uh, then I started to get symbols coming through. Um, I had a, a guide that came in and as I say, Reiki was around at that time and I had a, a huge North American Indian guy came through and in full headdress. I said, well, I don't really, you know, this is very sort of trending at the moment. I, I don't really want to sort of think I'm jumping on a bandwagon here. So I said, are you sure you're genuine? He said, well, I'm here and I'm staying here. He wouldn't move. He was right in front of me. It was amazing. And he said, I'm giving you a symbol to use for, to, to bring in the energies, to invoke the channel of energies of, of love and compassion. So I said, well, I don't know. I, you know, it's Reiki. It's full of symbols. I don't want to look like I'm copying Reiki. Anyway, um, he said, well, I'm giving it to you anyway. So he gave me the symbol. And when he drew the symbol over me, I just felt like I was tingling from top to bottom. So I said, oh, well, thank you very much. I was a bit gracious then and said, thank you. And, and he disappeared and I had the symbol and I lent it to some people and showed them the symbol and they used it. And I used it and I've been using it ever since. And I've taught thousands of people how to bring in healing energies using the symbol. And the big thing with the symbol, and I, I've been given 40 of these now, is that they cut through any self-doubt. You know, we can all heal. There's no doubt that, about that. We've all got the natural ability hidden within us. It's a, one of the powers that we've lost as we've become caught up in a material world. But we've all got that uh, ability, but we, we've also got a lot of self-doubt. So... The symbols are a language you can use that allow you to cut through the self-doubt. So they work very well and they're for all sorts of different aspects of healing. So that's, that's how I started. <laughs> that's how I started. Very interesting. So I'm, I'm curious, um, not that you have to share, you know, your secrets with us right now, but um, this, the, the symbols, um, you, you talk about them as like a language. Can you expound on that a little bit? Yes, what happens, it, it, if, if, I, if I wanted to show to you that everything's okay, and say we were setting up this, this call and that we weren't able to speak to each other, and you were sort of mouthing, is everything okay? I would do that to show that everything was okay. And you wouldn't understand that immediately. So you would get that message. That is how it works with symbols. You draw the symbol and you send the energy, the, the symbol sends its own energy to the universe, like a, like a channel in reverse, if you like. It's a, it's a message going out there and an intention. And intention is a very powerful force that which we use when we manifest. And setting intentions always seem to work for me. And if you set the intention by drawing the symbol and saying, this is what I want. I want to invoke, to channel the energies of love and compassion, which are a very, very high frequency energy, which we know once somebody gets love and which they get a high frequency energy, they can use it for themselves to heal. So lift their energies, change their mood, whatever they want to do with it. But uh, at least the symbol sets the tone. Sets the, sets the message out there and there's all sorts of different uh, there's, there's a protection symbol which is 
very useful for healers because we're not particularly good at protecting our own energies we tend to be more focused on giving rather than protecting ourselves and most of us are empathetic um, and I always say you know it, it's, it's, it's it's wonderful to be empathetic but don't let it become who you are you you need to control it you always need to be in control and that's the important thing and by protecting your energy you can stay in control and not be overwhelmed by other people's emotions when i i use other people's emotions all the time when i'm healing because i i i think i mentioned to you before i follow the energy when i'm healing so when i when i connect with somebody i deliberately open up to feel the energy that of their a problem, their emotion, their, their fear, the, the heartache, whatever it is that they're feeling, and that follow the energy. And when you open up, you must, you really must be in control of the situation and, and not allow yourself to be overwhelmed by your client's feelings and the negativity of them, because of, they're mostly a negative. <laughs> It's the negative things they come to you for. And, the, and apart from all the other energies that are going on around us, from our media, uh, there's a lot going on out there at the moment that could make you fearful. So I think protection is really important. Um, so there's a protection symbol. And the whole, a uh, lot of my work has been in the past, has been involved in clearing really heavy negative energies like black magic and curses and all that sort of thing and and i've never found it a big problem um because i've always had the protection and i've got i've got a language that helps me i use it i still use the symbols myself even though i mean a lot of the it's automatic now if you see i haven't got the stuff out but i still like to use the symbols Especially for distance healing, it's just so simple, you know, you think of somebody, you draw the symbols and whoosh, you know, the energy's there. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, when you, something that, that came to mind um, when you talked about using symbols for protection, um, you know, as you're healing somebody, uh, what came to me, which actually leads to our, you know, my next question was, um, you know, being a channel which in in my personal language i would say vessel but whether you're channeling or being a vessel to bring the healing um that that was is what i'm understanding is that like um in order to protect yourself from someone else's um energy that you have to be in such a state where you are so filled with this divine love that that there's nothing that can actually get through to you, that you have to be so encompassed and I guess I would say like wrapped almost like a cocoon, right? Of this of the divine love to to be like a constant vessel, a constant channel to bring forth the healing with no interruption. Mm -hmm um yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, when you you when you've been working on yourself for a while you do get to that point but a lot of people are coming into healing then they're still needing healing for themselves so while you're in that state of not actually quite being in that what i would say fully in unity with their divine self then there's there's room for Doubt. And once you've got room for doubt or, or low self-esteem or a little bit of un unworthiness or guilt or whatever, you know, all of us are wounded at some, in some way because we've had to go through the challenges. That, that, that's the whole point of our life on earth, go through the challenges and find the love. But we, most of us have still got some issues somewhere. So I like to be about embraces. I like to make sure that we're covered, we're sorted, and then everybody can relax when we're doing a session. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but it, it, the one of the loveliest things about this is that the more healing you do, 
the more in that state of love you spend most of your day in that state of love so it's it's a beautiful and it just makes uplifts you know, i'm always stimulated when i've done a, a session yeah. well i can yeah. definitely resonate with that um you know as i'm kind of in that place too or learning to heal and that i'm actually healing as i'm learning to heal you know and so uh i definitely hear you on that one you know and, and it's actually the and it's perfect the more i'm in the presence of love the more that um it's easier for me to just go right back there you know if i find myself coming out so um that's yeah, yeah it becomes your point of reference it becomes yeah. where you, you you that's home you come back home to that stage and it's interesting because i'm um, doing a lot of teaching these days and one of the things I think is really important is for, for healers to spend a good amount of time healing themselves you know the, yeah. the very nature of healers is that we if, especially if we want to do it as a big feature of our lives and if it's a big part of our life purpose is that all we want to do is to give 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 but it, it is really important that we remember to, to do some work for ourselves as well and I'm not very good at that, but I've done a lot in this. One of the good things about being locked down, and my husband's shielded, so we're doubly locked. <laughs> yeah. We've got three or four months now, and I think we're going to be down for another three or four months. But that's okay. But it's given me time to sit and think, well, what, what else do I want to heal in myself? And I've spoken to lots of people who are going through this. It's an excellent time. For, for healers and for people generally on their spiritual journey to, to go into hibernation like well it's a bit just like a, a, a butterfly you know you, you go into the chrysalis you, you shut yourself down you hibernate you think go inside because you haven't got anywhere else to go and then you can start to transform and as we come out and merge with the new energies of the new world that are coming then we then we've got a chance for change, so it is an ideal time for everybody to to be working on their own healing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I definitely agree with that one. I have found that that's um, one thing that's been coming to me during this time. It seems for anyone watching this in the future that you know this time of uh, isolation per se, in you know with the COVID. Um, it's been very challenging for many, um, but what I have found in personally has yeah, definitely that too. This is a time that I've been given to really do a lot more inner work. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so when, when we can go, when I can go out into the world, you know, that I, I'm elevated, you know, I'm, I'm better than I was when this whole thing started. So yeah. And I think this is when we do, we often find what we really need to be doing, uh, getting some inspiration for the next part of our journey. I've, I've been told many times in meditation that there will come a time when we, that we, we, we have to spring into action as light workers, as bringers of light and love. Not everybody is here this lifetime to actively help other people move into the light but a lot of us are and i know a lot of my colleagues and friends who are who are also like-minded have found it frustrating over the last few years they put on workshops and they get a, just a handful of people they write a book and doesn't they sell a few but not so many and they feel a little bit disappointed that their their vision of coming and doing so much for the world and helping so many people isn't quite taking off as they planned but I've always felt that sometimes something was going to come along that would wake up the world would wake people up and draw people towards their spirituality and we would suddenly find there's a lot of thirst for understanding and healing and growth spiritual empowerment all these things are, are going to be needed and I do feel this is the time when a lot of us are stepping into our full stride if you like definitely yes yes and what is very interesting that I found was that um, 
from I've heard from several sources that you know, Corona, speaking of the virus, um, actually means crown. Yeah. So whether you know whether you understand the chakras or the you know um, Kabbalistic tree of life, you know that there's in the crown you have the crown chakra, or in the Kabbalah it's called um, Keter. So it's where the divine um, energy comes down through us, right? And so um, it's almost like like uh, we're being told, hey, you know, uh, pay attention to this. Pay attention to your um, who you really are, like you know, right? So um, tap in, you know, seek, you know, what what you may become out of this. So sure, yeah. and I and I do think that uh, we we were talking about bringing people to the state of joy. It's the greatest uh, blessing you could possibly have is to see someone who's unhappy, struggling. And I, I just had a client today like this who's full of anger, doesn't know why, feels frustrated in a powerful job and, and keeps hitting brick walls as right, left and centre and just really definitely not in a state of joy. And just in an hour's session, I've seen them and I start to sparkle. I mean, you know this, when people start to hear their eyes sparkle, which is really lovely. And then seeing that sort of, and of course, feeling the energy shifting and shifting and the, going from that sort of dark, naggy energy, which always runs down my back to that sort of sweet energy that comes in when they're connected so that so through the crown to as you said to the divine i mean that's that's fantastic feeling and and to see people doing that has been really fantastic and i my my next big step for me is to get which is something again i've been working on through this shutdown lockdown or whatever you call it hibernation <laughs> and it's to absolutely uh, set up a, a school for teaching people how I do the healing and teaching them symbols and doing it all online and teaching people how they can do healing online. Like you can heal somebody like I can heal you now if you, if we wanted to go into a session without any, no problems with distance, no barriers. And I'm very excited about that. I'm setting, I've done a lot of teaching in the past, but this time I really feel very excited that this is going to go really well and I can help a lot of people. And I think that I believe there's a thirst for it. it, it it's such an exciting thing to do. You couldn't be more, for, I don't think there's anything more fulfilling than seeing someone blossom and find that happiness that they, they have. A lot of people, of course, come in with problems from past lives. So they're, especially healers <laughs> healers themselves of course have got a lot of persecution wounding and uh, to see them getting through that and over that and finding that happy happy spot is really great it's a great feeling yeah yeah that's you know and everything that you're saying actually lines up with science too i mean science is beginning to prove so much of this mm -hmm. uh, there was a book that i read um I believe it's called the healing codes and uh, they were talking about how they took um, I believe it was cancerous cells from um, certain patients who were sick and they put them in petri dishes in a room and then they had people who uh, either they knew or the you know loved ones or people who were willing to pray and, and send healing to them and so they they would be in a completely different area, maybe not even in the building. I'm not sure if I'm quoting the book right because it's been a while since I've read it. But and they and they were praying for the people, um, and then after they they were done with the experiment, they went and looked at the cells again, and the cells had been restored. Yeah, I can believe that. Right. So yeah, when you're talking about not needing to actually be um, in presence of the person that you want to send healing to, it's yeah. very, 
It's yes, true. It's very real, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I'm lucky because I feel energies. I mean, different people uh, have different uh, skills and gifts when it comes to healing. My friend Sal, who I'm now a good friend of, the one who I who started me off on the journey she can see energy and i've always envied her because she can look at a person see their aura see what's going on for them and immediately know do a diagnosis whereas i've never been able to do that but what i do is i feel it i feel the energy so i and as i say if i can feel the energy of you sitting in north carolina and i'm in Hampshire in England I'm sorry there's some, there's got to be there has to be a connection we have that connection there's, I don't need any more proof but and then of course the scientists are catching up with us that's the right. point of the whole yeah. thing Elizabeth they're catching up with us <laughs> yeah 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 that is the truth there right? <laughs> I I will agree with that one definitely yeah 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 and, and the more I learn about this um you know uh, that we all come from the same source, right? And so if we all contain the um, same spark or light, if you will, you know, uh, of this source or what people call God or creator or spirit, you know, mm -hmm. um, that means that we are way more interconnected than, than we realize. And yeah. so when we actually take time to, um, I guess, like, you know, uh, to sacrifice time to really tune in to somebody and, and send them healing to pray to, you know, um, that it's, that it's heard and that it's effective, you know, because we're, when we're healing another, we're actually healing ourselves, you know, because we're all, we're all, Kind of yeah. like we're one in a sense anyway exactly i, I what, what's happened to, for me several times is that when i've been i remember the first time this happened i was healing a lady who had been abused and she kept going from one abusive relationship to another <clears throat> and i said to her look it's time to break the pattern now and let's do something symbolic let's visualize you absolutely breaking up a, a, a pattern so i told her to visualize a piece of wood with abuse in it written in it and then breaking it up which was the visualization i knew she could do it because i'd done some work with her before and when she was saying i said are you really ready to break this pattern now to break away from always stepping back into a relationship where you end up being abused so you're going to reclaim your worthiness your your self-worth so that this doesn't happen again she said yes i am absolutely ready and she i could tell when she said it I, it resonated through me that's the truth she was ready so we did the visualization took her through a meditation at the, as i was finishing it i was told as she healed herself there she'd healed 2670 or some number i don't remember the exact number but they reeled out an exact number of other women that had been healed when she did that mm. And I think what we, what we don't realize a lot of the time is the ripple effects of what we do. So not just that it, I, I do something nice for you and then you go and, you know, you, or you, I make you happy and then you make somebody else happy or whatever, as, whatever I do in that way, that ripple effect, which is lovely. But also that when you do some healing, other people who are in the same resonance also pick pick up what you're sending out there pick it up and use it because why wouldn't they you know just because you're consciously open to it what about the unconscious side of you of, of all those people sitting out there who don't even realize that maybe they're eating their tea or whatever but they have this intention to to switch something change something in their lives and they're praying to god can I change this, please? Are oh, there angel or what, who, whatever they do? And then your energy comes flying out through the waves. Boom, boom. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> it's very wonderful. And, uh, you know, I, I, for me personally, again, that I feel like the, when we heal ourselves, we're actually also healing the generations that come after us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because, um, 
you know, we know again that science is caught up with us, right? And that um, they can actually tell that the trauma lives in the cells and in the DNA. So when we birth forth children, um, you know, whether the, the trauma is from, you know, the male or, or is from the woman, that, that trauma bring, it is brought forth through in the child. And so when we make that choice to actually clear that and heal from traumas or whatever things that we haven't dealt with, um, we're actually healing our children and our grandchildren and great grandchildren. And, and so it's a, a beautiful and amazing thing that we can bring forth healing in this time, you know, to bring, bring that for the future. Wonderful. Yes, and uh, one of the symbols I've been given is to clear and genetic situations. In any ways, emotional or mindsets, attitudes can all be healed. And karma, of course. Family karma, ancestry karma, karma curses something. Great grandfather was cursed, and it goes down through the generations. You can clear it. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, there's hope. There's hope for everybody. Fantastic hope. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I think you had mentioned um, a little earlier um, about teaching others to heal. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you want to, you know, expand on that and talk about maybe what you have planned now and for the future about where you want to take this, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. But, um, it's, I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm hoping to get this off the ground. Well, I'm intending to start in August. I'm doing a, a lot of work for Japan, uh, uh, people in Japan. We've got translators set up and everything. So I'm starting in Japan. Um, <laughs> that's the way it goes in the world, isn't it, at the moment? Um, but um, the, the, the mainstream teaching, um, I'm doing seven modules. Um, the different modules include such things as how to manage and look after your own energy and heal yourself. And then there'll be, be protection and the energies of the, 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 the way negative energies work and how, that means how we can manage them. Because I, I think if you understand how something works, then you can manage it. If you know why you feel drained when you visit a certain person, you can do something about it. And, and I'm, I'm all for getting people empowered in themselves. So that means taking control back and not being the victim of, of, of anything, but it will be it the energies of the people around you or the people in your work or just mass consciousness. So that'll be, there's, a, there's something about that in the workshops. Then I'll be having workshops about the actual symbols that I use, um, how to, to use the symbols, the effectiveness of them. And of course, there'll be a lot of, uh, because we can do breakout, this is so nice, these breakout rooms with Zoom, people can get together in twos and do work on them, on each other. So there's a massive opportunity for practice, which mm. I always thought was the, 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 the hold up and the, 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 the problem of doing this, doing it online. But of course, we can, with Zoom, we can do that. So I'll be doing a lot, having a lot of, uh, of practice uh, in the, in the workshops. I do think you learn that way. Um, I'll also be looking at karma um, and past lives. Past lives are a bit of a speciality for me. I, in the last year, I've always been able to see, have visions of, of past lives, but not to the extent that I can now. And if I feel the energy I asked to see where the root cause of a, of, a, of a problem is. And that's something I want to teach people, to find the underlying cause of a problem, not just difficult childhood, because there would have been a reason why you had a difficult childhood. What life lesson are you learning? So going into life lessons and why people are going through situations and then find the past life and do the healing of the soul at that level and then bringing any fragments of the soul which may have got left behind and bringing aspects back to make people feel whole again. So that'll be all covered in the, in, in, in the workshop. Yeah, I think there's a few other things that I haven't mentioned, but that'll, be, but that'll keep us going for a while. 
This sounds wonderful. And as we know, the Zoom will be great because you don't have to be in the same room with somebody yeah. in order to receive and give. And yeah. so, you know, I think same the country, same room. You know, this right. most, most of my uh, my uh, healing clients are all over the world. So we'll carry on on that way. Saves me for I spent twenty five years traveling around the world doing workshops, giving presentations on radio, television, all this sort of thing. And it's quite nice now to think that I can, you know, I can go downstairs, play with my dogs afterwards, and I don't have to leave my husband on his own. So it's good. It's good. Oh, I, like the, I like modern technology. Yeah. <laughs> it's the healer's friend. Yeah. Yes. It can be your friend if you allow Once it to be. It works. If it works. <laughs> um, well, I thank you, Anne, for sharing um, your healing information with me and with the rest of those that are watching and I'm intrigued to see you know what you will be doing in the future and sure. um, I definitely see you have a very loving and compassionate spirit within you and um, very gracious and kind and I'm honored that you joined me on this interview today um, so i just want to see if there's any other last words that you would like to um yeah the very last words were something i my my agent would have said to me should have been my first words but <laughs> i'm not very good at promoting okay. myself. but i have a book coming out this this summer too i've got six books already published with mainline publishers but this one is coming out in august and it's it is everything every technique i've learned and all the symbols and the power the power of of symbols and that's coming out about august time again so great my last words <laughs> <laughs> sending lots of love to you and this wonderful project of yours and i'm wishing the summit well and everybody that's involved in it and a, a great chance to be rippling out there big time Yes, yes. Well, I'm excited again to have you join me on this. And um, it's just my goal in here to bring, you know, healing to the world in whatever way, you know, fits somebody. So, um, you know, we're all tweaked a little differently. And, you know, we all have our special unique message. And um, I just wish you lots of success. And um lots of healing to to take place you know with your clients and again thank you so much and um i hope thank you have you. a wonderful wonderful evening i guess in, in your yes <laughs> <laughs> that's right all right and thank you so much bless you Elizabeth. thank you bye-bye